comes to mind when you think of the circus? I'm gonna guess clowns, ringmaster, a tent, sequins, animals, maybe a human cannonball. You probably don't think of contemporary performance art, of complex and expressive theatricality. You probably don't think of social change, of political commentary, of community transformation. But circus today can be all of these things. And not far from here, in Northwest Philadelphia, I'm the director of a school where we are exploring all of it. To back up for a moment, I discovered circus when I was young, and I found ways to train and perform as a juggler and a stilt walker and a trapeze artist. And for the last 20 years, I've been building a school that now has over three dozen staff members and 500 students that take classes every week. And many of these students are most excited about circus as a modern art form. So that brings me to my main question of the day. What is circus and why does it matter? A prominent circus historian named Pascal Jacob describes circus as a simple tree-like structure. Its roots run deep into the symbolic fertile ground of human history. The practices of acrobatics, of object manipulation, and of training wild animals date back nearly 5,000 years. But it wasn't until 1768, a gentleman named Philip Astley in England fused these elements together, forming the base of our tree trunk. And he and the other circus proprietors of his era established what we think of as the common circus vocabulary now. The ring, the roles, the language, the style. And very little changed in circus for about 200 years. Up until the 1970s, when amid the cultural transformations and revolutions of the time, circus began to undergo frequent dramatic experiments. The branches began to extend. And this one circus that had a strict identified type branched out into many different expressions of a rich and diverse art form. So here we are in the branches. One of these branches maintains what we call a classical aesthetic. These are shows that still perform under tents with traditionally structured acts that often have a predictable but satisfying crescendo. And these shows may have animals they often have traditional showmanship and costumes and gender roles. Some of them in Europe still perform in historic circus buildings or in variety theaters. The second branch of circus is called New Circus. And this includes Cirque du Soleil and the Big Apple Circus and Universal Circus and a few others. These are companies that still perform under tents with acts, but they've spent a lot more time developing themes and choreography and production elements. And many of the acts they present are not typical circus disciplines. For example, Cirque du Soleil uh, has a show where they're using BMX bikes, and Universal Circus incorporates hip hop dance. But the final major area of circus that we want to talk about today is called contemporary circus. C contemporary circus is where we see the branches of this tree diverge in all kinds of interesting ways. Contemporary circus is less interested in the demonstration of incredible feats, and it's more about the representation of artistic concepts. Unlike classical circus, which puts entertainment and spectacle first, contemporary circus is more interested in creating meaning. It presents an idea, a vision that is personal to each artist, and it develops this idea. It is less important to have a sequence of unconnected acts and more about creating a cohesive show where the artists have relationships on stage and where the very notion of an act tends to disappear. So what does this look like? It can look like almost anything. The only limit is our artists' imaginations. Let's look at a few images. Contemporary circus might be dark and intense. This is Johann Le Guillerme in France. It might be abstract. This is Campagna Finzi Pasca from Italy. It could be playful, such as the Acrobuffos in New York. It could be a bunch of half-naked bearded men. This is Cirque Alphonse from Canada. Contemporary circus might be performed on a stage, such as Machine de Cirque, also from Canada. 
It could be performed in the street. This is Occam's razor from the UK. It could be performed in an apartment. This is a show that happened at the Montreal Circus Festival called Se Rendre. Most certainly, it will be very, very human. This is Almanac Dance Circus Theater from Philadelphia. What I'm showing you here is that contemporary circus can be tremendously diverse. This doesn't mean, however, that there are no rules at all. For a show to be considered circus, it must have recognizable circus disciplines, acrobatics, aerials, equilibristics, or juggling. And for it to be considered a successful work, it needs to have elements of virtuosity, moments of physical achievement that take the audience's breath away. This is, after all, how circus began, and its essence lies here, in humans achieving what seemed impossible. This hand balancer is Megan Gendel in a show called Webs, and she's performing a piece to a spoken word text about sexual abuse. For many audiences, the text will resonate deeply. For some, it will be empowering. For others, it might be disturbing. And some people will just come to watch the hand balancing, and they will admire how she's working with the canes and imagine what it feels like in her body and wonder if they could do it themselves. And there will be a whole range of other reactions. But the important thing is, this audience came here to see acrobatics. They weren't particularly seeking out just any live show, and they weren't looking for work about sexual abuse, but they came because they know the thrill of watching circus arts. And that is a way in for many audiences. Here's another example. This is a company called Les Copoteurs from France, and they are a tight wire walking troupe. Uh, a husband and wife duo formed this company. And in the year 2000, the husband, Antoine, had a terrible fall from the high wire that left him partially paralyzed. He stepped back into a directing role with the company and created this show a few years later called The Fille Sous la Neige, which he describes as a tribute to all those who are struggling with a handicap. On their website, they describe the show as an ethereal dance that recounts the transience and fragility of our existence, of mankind's wishful and awkward time on Earth. Not all circus shows today come with a heavy message. This is the Gantini Juggling Project from the UK. And this show, Spring, they describe as delving deeply into juggling as pure choreography. They're really interested in the combination between juggling and contemporary dance. Now, the school that I run has two branches. We have the Philadelphia School of Circus Arts, which is a recreational school offering classes uh, every week for adults and kids. And then we have the professional program called Circadium. Circadium is a higher education program. It's a three-year course that grants a diploma of circus arts. We formed Circadium in 2017 out of the growing understanding that formal education has been the key to the development of this art form in many other parts of the world. In Europe, in Australia, in Canada, in many parts of South America, they have thriving, government-recognized, degree-granting circus schools. And we see a tremendous amount of companies coming from these countries. The incubation of young artists in schools like this, where they have the time and space to develop their own unique artistic voice and to create new work without the commercial pressure, is essential to the evolution of the art form. I have 29 students in Circadium this year, full-time students. And these are students who are utterly passionate about contemporary circus. For them, classical circus doesn't have a lot of relevance or interest. It is, feels a bit like a relic to them. But circus itself, the art form, the discipline, the challenge, this is what excites them. This is what drives them forwards. Our next challenge is to reach audiences with this new work. American audiences, in particular, have strong associations with circus as old-fashioned. They have an underlying worry about animal cruelty. And at best, they may think of circus as something that is fun for children. But invariably, when audiences come out to see contemporary circus, their minds are changed. They begin to connect the disciplines that they see on stage with other things in art and in life. They watch relationships unfold on stage and discover that circus artists are speaking a very special physical language. Good contemporary circus can make an audience question and contemplate and laugh, and gasp, and breathe. A show might be clear and narrative. It might be nonlinear and esoteric. 
Art can reach people on many different levels and serve many purposes. But the inherent virtuosic skill of circus is a way in for many audiences. There are many other types of performing arts out there that are struggling to maintain and grow their audiences now. With digital entertainment taking over more and more of our lives, will we always be able to bring people together in a theater or on the street or in a tent to share the experience of watching something live? There's no guarantee of this. But circus has a better chance than almost any other performing art form because of its excitement, its versatility, its reach to so many different demographics, and its accessibility. What's more, the community of circus that is growing is an ecosystem that we expect to have a long-term impact on the performing arts landscape of the United States. Circus will continue to collaborate with theater companies and dance companies and musicians. We get calls all the time from these organizations who would like to add elements of circus into their productions. But I am looking forward to the day when circus will stand shoulder to shoulder with these other art forms and to be recognized as an equally powerful means of expression. Thank you. Thank you.